2014 was the year Scotland was re-politicised by the independence referendum. The year seen people regain or first pique their interest in politics in this country. It was also the first time that the vote was enfranchised to 16 and 17 year olds and this film will explore the possibility of lowering the voting age permanently. I spoke to some pupils at Duncan Riggs Secondary School about what it felt like to vote in the referendum and how it feels to not be able to vote in the general election. Yeah, it felt good, like proud, like a sense of like maturity going in and placing a cross and whatever you felt was right. It was I liked it, like, and I felt like I was strong about the opinion, so I felt good that I had a chance to get my point across. How does it feel knowing you're not able to vote in the general election? Not as bad as I thought it would be because. Like the referendum's different, I was like forced to indulge yourself in information. So it was not as bad, but I would prefer to obviously, but it's nothing that's a huge impact on my life. So It felt good, it felt important and like our voice actually mattered in our country's future. How do you feel that you that you can't vote in the general election? It's quite disappointing because if we're mature enough to decide whether we should become independent, we're mature enough to decide who runs our country. I was very glad to get my chance to vote because I felt quite strongly one way about it. I'm glad my opinions were given across. Yeah. And how does it make you feel that you can't vote in the general election then? Well, I'm slightly disappointed but it's not too bad because I don't know which way I'd vote anyway if I'm being honest. Yeah. Uh, a feeling of inclusion as I got to get put my points across and how I felt about it. And how does it feel knowing you're not able to vote in the general election? Not that bad, as I think it would take more time for you to decide your party policies, which one you're going to follow. So I think 18 is still the right age for it. Mrs Young, Head of Modern Studies at Duncan Rigg, told me about her class's responses to the referendum and the upcoming general election. I think we have to be very careful that what we're trying to do in Modern Studies is to educate children about making up their own minds about issues, is about evaluating sources of information and comparing sources and, and coming to their own decision, asking questions, not just taking somebody's word for it or somebody's pamphlet as the gospel, that it's important that they are aware and that they have to be proactive in that. Um, the leaflets come through the doors, there's um, part of political broadcasts on the television, um, but it's important that they're discussing issues. I think in modern studies, right from S1, um, we have them looking at different newspapers and the way that newspapers present information depending on which political party they are supporting. Yeah. Um, we analyse um, extracts from the, the leaders' debates on television um, and get the children to, to look at who they think performed well and why. Um, some of them have very strong political views already, um, but many of them have are just simply... Um, putting forward views that they've heard their own parents say or their own family say or what they think is acceptable to say. So I think in, in modern studies it's our job to make sure that they're aware that there's lots of issues out there, lots of questions to be asked and it's important they are proactive themselves in accessing a range of information so that they can come to their own decision. And um, what about now? Uh, are people talking in your class about uh, lowering the voting age? Is that quite a big topic on their minds? It is, yes. Um, the, the sort of the confusion that exists if we if we were able to vote in the referendum, how come we're not able to vote in in an election? That there is a, a an issue there. I think that I mean they've got some very valid questions, very valid points to make. Um, even S one pupils. Um, can see that that's something that's worth discussing and that if it, if it did happen in Scotland and it didn't happen in the rest of the UK then again they're, they're quite forthcoming of it on their views on that. Lots of good questions. The pupils of Duncan Rigg have been left highly politicised by the referendum and their debating team gave an insight into how they feel about the topic of lowering the voting age for general elections. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, uh, fellow debaters. Today I will be proposing the motion that this House believes there is no compelling argument to lower the voting age to 16 in general elections. I will discuss that 16 year olds are more swayed by empty arguments, such as empty promises that these parties may make, and also I will go over that there is much more parental influence on 16 year olds than 18 year olds. These young people are too young to make this type of important decision. 
because they are influenced by such kind of information, minuscule things. Yes. But are you saying that other people who do vote, like older than 16, they're not influenced at all as well? They're influenced, but they're influenced by more, like, my mum will be more influenced by what the government are going to do for the economy than what they're going to do for the drinking age. I myself am 16 years old, and I intend to stay in Scotland for possibly the rest of my life. Yet I cannot have a say about my country's political future. Ironic, isn't it? I mean, I may not be the brightest teenager ever, but I have a fair grasp on politics, better than some, admittedly worse than others. However, I may know more than an 18-year-old who is able to vote. So why them and not me? What singles me out so much that I can have sex, get a job, leave school, shoot a gun, fight for this country, but I can't vote for its government? I'd say the fact that we can join the army without being able to vote is a compelling argument to say that we should increase the age that you join the army. It should be the other way around, not the way that the opposition are suggesting. The proposition seems to think it's going to have a profound effect on our political climate. My point of view is, and what's wrong with that? You know, I recently heard a speech given by a member of our debating society on the lying in politics and the, the, the utter injustice and lies told by every politician. So why does bringing a new type of voter and a new type of influence into politics, why would that be a bad thing? Why would that be a bad thing to change our political landscape? It'd make a more diverse... Uh, yes. Because these younger people are more influenced by these lies and false things that these politicians say. I'm very glad you brought that up because that leads me on to my next point, which is that Greg was saying that you shouldn't change all the laws because changing the laws is ridiculous and it makes no sense. And well, I think it also ties in with the whole thing of well, they're not being influenced and they, they wouldn't look into it. I think you'll find that the younger you are, the more curious you tend to be, the less cynical you become, as shown in psychological studies. So I feel that young people are more likely to look into politics and look into what it actually Professor is. Professor John Curtis, president of the British Polling Council and expert in voting behaviours, tells the benefits and downfalls that could come with lowering the voting age. Well, if we go into the path as it looks as though of enfranchising 16 and 17 year olds we should do so with our eyes open it will probably result in somewhat lower levels of overall turnout than would otherwise be the case um, but on the other hand probably 16 and 17 year olds will turn out in somewhat higher numbers than those who are slightly older not least because it's true that because they're living at home because they're less geographically mobile it's rather easier for mum and dad to kind of say hang on we think you ought to go and it's also much easier to ensure that they're on the electoral register so there's some advantages they have as compared with 18 to 21 year olds but there's still that general rule younger people are less interested in politics and therefore as a result the motivation to go and vote is going to be weaker with almost inevitable consequences in terms of somewhat lower levels of turnout. 17 year old Robert Weir started the Twitter campaign Young Scots for Union during the referendum and he has an unexpected opinion on the matter. How does it make you feel that 16 and 17 year olds will be allowed to vote in Scotland and, but not in England and not on matters of the UK? Well, yeah, um, the thing about that is at the moment that's the case, but if the Labour government, if a Labour government gets in, especially with the SNP, if there was a coalition, God forbid, um, in May, then um, that would happen. Personally, I don't see there being an issue with us being enfranchised for the Scottish Parliament and not for the UK Parliament, because there's two separate parliaments. Um, and personally, I advocate sort of neither. David Cameron said there was no compelling reasons to lower the voting age. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree, actually. I don't think there's any compelling um, case. I think that's not, again, it's not an insult. And I don't think he meant it as an insult or a sort of a vote of no confidence within young people. Um, I just think it's not a case, it's not, there's not massive need for it. It's, you know, I'm, I'm not going to cry if it happens, but I'm not going to rejoice if it does. Uh, either um, and in that sense I just don't see the massive appetite I don't think it's um, so necessary um, again because they will I fear they'll be used as um, political capital but no I think David Cameron's right to make that point um, and the whole idea like I'm back to this uh, people will say oh well, what by no taxation without representation but you know we're going to be really you know facetious here um, I've been paying tax since I was you know eight and old enough to go to the shops because I've been paying VAT you know, we can all pay tax um, and I don't think at 16 all of a sudden you need this representation, this democratic responsibility. I don't think it's hugely necessary. So I think David Cameron's 
quite right to perhaps voice an unpopular opinion, but I think it's probably more popular than we think. It's obvious that there is a mixed opinion on lowering the voting age, but this policy is being pushed through in Scotland, so there will be a massive discrepancy when 16 and 17 year olds in Scotland who have been able to vote in local matters will not be able to vote in the next general election.